Recently, the SoundCloud era of hip hop has been in discussion with talks of its death and how artists from that time are doing now. The SoundCloud era was a fun and nostalgic time for hip hop with many new sounds and artists emerging. A handful of artists from that era have built long and sustainable careers for themselves, while many others have fallen off entirely. Ski Mask the Slump God, despite his unique sound, his issues with his label, and his battle with being an ex's shadow, was able to solidify himself as one of the largest artists of this generation. But how did Ski overcome all these difficulties and build a long lasting career for himself while being in a completely different lane than the majority of the artists coming from that scene. Recently I've been thinking about how interesting it is that Ski is so well known among the general population despite having such a unique sound and come up. Of course the simple answer is because you make some fire music, but as we know just because you make good music doesn't mean you're automatically granted access into the mainstream. So let's take a look into Ski's career and see what he did differently that allowed him to stay relevant for so long. Ski began his music career after meeting XXXTentacion in jail. As we know X is a major part in Ski's story and his come up. Together they formed the collectives Very Rare and Members Only, with Very Rare being Ski's collective and Members Only being X's collective. Him and X began making music together with very little resources. They first began recording on a blue snowball microphone and the quality was not that great, but they used the distortion to their advantage. X and Ski were pioneers when it came to using distortion in their music. Of course Raider Clan and other Florida artists had done it too, but X and Ski used it very differently. Their music was much more aggressive and they were known for their crazy 808s. In 2015 they dropped Members Only volume 1 and they clearly had chemistry. Right off the bat their music was pretty good and they complemented each other well. Ski in particular was known for his unique flows, his fun ad-libs, and his charismatic bars. They began getting attention and building a fan base in the underground scene throughout 2015 and 2016. Ski also began putting out tons of his own projects in 2016 with Drown and Designer, Very Rare Lost Files, and Slaps from My Drop Top Minivan. These projects really helped Ski grow his own fan base since he didn't have a ton of music out. In 2016 he went from around 4,000 followers on SoundCloud to over 70,000 by the end of the year. Some highlights from these albums include Like a Soccer Mom, Where's the Blow, and Life is Short. However, 2017 would be an even bigger year for Ski. With X blowing up, he was getting a lot of attention from fans for songs like Take a Step Back, What an XXX Tarnation, and Rip Roach. He was also featured on Members Only Volume 3, which did pretty well too. But what would really propel Ski into the eyes of a wider audience would be a few of the singles he released in 2017, like Catch Me Outside and Baby Wipe. These songs absolutely blew up and were also both paired with Lyrical Lemonade music videos, which are now both over 100 million views. I think the reason that these songs in particular blew up is because they seemed a lot more accessible than some of Ski's earlier work. They didn't have the same distortion and chaotic energy that a lot of his earlier songs had, but they also kept and maintained a lot of the qualities that made his music so enjoyable. The beats were fantastic and the flows were amazing and that really appealed to the average listener. In 2017, he went from 70,000 followers on SoundCloud to 550,000 by the end of the year. By the end of 2017, Ski Master Slump God was much more than just a SoundCloud rapper. However, after he blew up, he encountered a few more issues that would stand in the way of his career. A big one and pretty notable one is his relationship with X. X was also blowing up and it was quite a bit larger than Ski. They had multiple songs together, were in the same collectives, and they did shows together. While a lot of fans saw them as a dynamic duo, many others saw Ski as X's sidekick or in X's shadow. Personally, I think they both complemented each other well and were a great contrast to one another when on tracks together, but a lot of people just preferred X. Obviously, Ski didn't want this, so he decided to distance himself from X. I have to distance myself because it's like nobody would see me as a individual rapper if I don't. I know there was a lot more going on behind the scenes with their friendship, and whether or not Ski should have distanced himself as a friend, I can't say, but from a career perspective, it was the right move. With multiple projects out and hit singles with no features, Ski had established himself as a talented, independent artist that brought a new sound to the table. But something that could have hindered his career even more happened in 2018. Ski signed to Republic Records in 2016 and had been working with them on his previous release, You Will Regret, and was also working with them for his next album, Beware the Book of Eli. The rollout and release for this project was a huge mess and heavily hindered its performance. From the beginning, there were many rumors of who was going to be on the project and what the project was going to be like. But the biggest issue was the release. There were multiple songs with samples that couldn't get cleared that resulted in those songs either not being on the project or the beats being changed entirely. The song Nationwide, also known as Worldwide, was another one of the songs intended for the project that probably could have been another hit for Ski, but it wasn't on the final product. For some reason, it was later released with some random person named Method doing the hook. I'm not sure why it ended up like that, but it pretty much ruined the song. Being fed up with 
with delays in his management, Skeed leaked the mixtape himself on SoundCloud as he intended for it to be released. It was then taken down by his own management 30 minutes later. It was re-released on May 11th with some changes made. It was missing the songs with Vengeance, Worldwide, Poltergeist, and Ski Meets World. In my opinion, these were some of the best songs on the project, and not having them on the project really hindered its performance. Regardless, it still peaked at 50 on the Billboard charts, and the songs Do I Have the Sauce and Coolest Monkey in the Jungle did pretty well. This was another big blow for Ski's career, but he kept pushing. Six months after the Rocky release of Beware the Book of Eli, Ski released his album Stokely. This was another one of Ski's best bodies of work and had a ton of great songs on it. It had two huge songs, Nuketown and Faucet Failure, that were both accompanied with Lyrical Lemonade videos. Foot Fungus and Unbothered also did fairly well. It had features from Juice World, Lil Yachty, Lil Baby, and more. The album sold 51,000 units first week and peaked at number 6 on the Billboard charts. To date, this is Ski's biggest commercial success and was an amazing bounce back from the disaster that was his last release. Since then, he's had songs like Carbonated Water, Burn the Hoods, and How You Feel all do pretty well. How did Ski, despite having such a unique sound, his issues with X, and his issues with his label, how did he not only succeed, but get as far as he did? Well, like I said earlier, he adapted his sound a bit more to appeal more so to a mainstream audience. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, here's an example. <laughs> That song is a lot more chaotic, and while a lot of Ski fans would really like that, I can guarantee you that the majority of casual listeners would probably not like the ad-lib track being louder than the vocal track and all the other crazy songs he used to put out. He also improved the quality of his music and used less distortion. But of course, Ski's signature lyrics and fun flows have also really helped separate him from most rappers out now. His charisma really shines through in his music, and it makes it a lot more appealing to fans. Also, if you didn't notice, every huge song that Ski had was accompanied with a lyrical lemonade music video. His close relationship with Cole Bennett has been extremely beneficial to his career. Ski started working with Cole right as Lyrical Lemonade was taking off and was very much in the right place at the right time. As of right now, Ski's done 10 music videos with Lyrical Lemonade and they've all performed very well. Last year, he released his Sin City mixtape and it sold 17,000 first week and peaked at 39 on the Billboard charts. It wasn't nearly as successful, but to be fair, it was just a mixtape with little to no promotion. It didn't really have any hits on it and it was supposed to be some sort of project that came out before another project since at one point Ski said he was going to drop another project the same month, but unfortunately that never happened. A lot of people think that because of this album Ski's falling off, but I can guarantee you whenever he comes back with a full project, it will do very well. I'm not sure when he'll drop next, but I'm very excited. Ski is in an amazing position right now and could very easily have another hit on his hands if he wanted to. It's inspirational to see that despite all the roadblocks in his way, Ski has built himself a very loyal fan base, a very successful career, and has become a very well-known artist. If you guys like this video, you might like my video where I talk about the downfall of members only, which was the collective that Ski used to be a member of. Other than that though, this has been Manny Balls. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.